Hello, this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo in my private practice in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm here with Ken's case, a continuation of the bone level implants. And uh, just to show you what's on the screen right now, these are the three implant screw retained crowns that will be placed today. And we have two molars and a bicuspid. A little bit about the shape, as you can see, the modified ridge lap on the bicuspid and the two molars which show um, a very highly polished undersurface. Uh, later on in the video we're going to show you the molar that um, that has a more of a convex surface than a concave uh, which is necessary for uh, cleansability and good tissue ad adaptation. The um, the one thing that I uh, want to be sure that you realize that I are already etched, uh, micro etched the surface uh, near where the composite is going to be uh, placed. So they're etched and silenated and ready to go. So here we are back in Ken's mouth. And um, I'm going to go ahead and move right to the first bicuspid. And, uh, go ahead and remove the healing abutments. All three healing abutments are Strawman bone level RC flared healing abutments. Of course the bicuspid is a little smaller in diameter and I'm backing that uh, out right now. And we'll use the micro suction uh, 20 gauge needle. Just go right in and remove all the moisture, antibacteria, invasion in the implant body. That's routine. We do that with every case. Uh, as we seat the screw retained by cuspid first, uh, a couple of things we're going to check. Number one, we'll check the contact area by asking Ken if he feels pressure in between uh, the placement of the uh, implant crown in the embrasure spaces of the natural dentition. Why do we want to do that? Well, we want to make sure that we're not pushing or leaning on an adjacent tooth while we're screwing it down, uh, which could orthodontically move the adjacent tooth. So we're doing this without any anesthetic. I never numb the patient for this procedure. It's, it's just not necessary. And, um, and if you're pushing too hard, then you do need to relieve your crown work. Now here I am, I'm adapting an instrument in the middle of the the driver and I'm, I'm hand tightening only, just hand tightening gently, ask, continuing to ask the patient, Ken do you feel it? And of course he shook his head no. Now we're checking for any tissue blanching in and around the crown. Um, we're also uh, checking the embrasure spaces to make sure that we have adequate embrasure space, which we do both buccal and lingually. And then um, we'll come back in, again, hand tighten, and continue to ask our patient, are you comfortable? And at that point, um, we're looking good. We're going to check with uh, our floss, which we use is Glide's Ultra Thin Floss. Of course, if the contacts are very tight, then we'll see that floss tear a little bit. Um, if uh, if it's certainly if it's too loose uh, or too open of a contact, then then we wouldn't have any resistance. Uh, now I'm going to use the torque driver, and we'll torque down the screw. That's a basal screw uh, to 35 newton centimeters squared. Again, I'm asking the patient also, are you feeling that? Are you feeling that? I'm also checking for to make sure we have an osteo integrated case by asking the patient, do you feel any pre pressure as I torque it down? So we're finishing uh, adapting the, the new crown into the area. And again, I'm checking the tissue for any blanching. I don't see any. Now we're going to check occlusion. I use AccuFilm 2 articulating paper and we did build up his bite a little bit on this uh, lower left side and right side. So we covered that earlier in the diagnostic wax up section. 
and now we're going to adjust the opposing arch. The upper arch contains seven bone level implants and a complete one piece plastic temporary that's been cemented in with temporary cement. Now you can see uh, the upper left first bicuspid needs some adjusting. So how do we do that? First thing I'd like to use is a fluted carbide, a gold fluted carbide uh, from um, uh, it's from the Neo Burr company um, and we'll just go ahead and adjust that. So I'm going to continue to adjust the occlusion until we have good contact on that side on both implant and natural teeth. Um, we're going to find out that um, this part of the procedure is important later on when we're um, fabricating the upper framework to the lower dentition. I, I do have a few more videos coming that cover Ken's case and we're going to continue to cover Ken's case all the way up and through the uh, the seating of the upper bridge and some of my discussions will will uh, be a little more involved with frameworks and framework fit custom abutments etc. Um, our laboratories are two. We have uh, uh, a, a lab here, a DePetro Dental Lab here in my office. Uh, it's on the same floor as my office. The other lab that I use for more aesthetic cases is uh, Toby Nielsen Dental Studio in Deerfield Beach, Florida. And if you want information about those labs, I'll be happy to forward that to you. Um, so right now we're adjusting occlusion and and you can see there's more and more marks now being shared amongst other teeth. Uh, we uh, wanted to make sure that the cusp tips on both sides were aligned properly and that we had a, a good line and plane of the patient's bite uh, from uh, the front portion toward the back. Now I think our patient is comfortable and we're getting close to uh, to finishing up on Ken. I'm going to be looking at a few more. I'll make a few more points um, about the the uh, molar crowns. If we look real close, we can see that the uh, contours, the buckle contours, the emergence profile contours, as well as the um, lingual contours, are important. Uh, how they sit on the tissue uh, when Ken uh, chews food. We don't want the food to get caught. So we know that everything that, that shows metal in this view is covered with tissue. Anything with ceramic is above the, the crest of the tissue. And we do want a positive seat in there to make uh, intimate contact with the gingival crest. Uh, the chimney is countersunk, the metal is countersunk, and we etch, acid etch with ceramic etch the porcelain and uh, and then we'll use a silenator material uh, and, and uh, bond to that at the end. We'll show you how we use Teflon into uh, to cover the screw head itself at a later date. So this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo here in my Boca Raton office. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, to write in, and we'll be happy to go over that with.